Paisen and definitely uh, Lexi here said it was a interesting night with the lots of lightning, lots of thunder and heavy amounts of rain. We go to Minot right now, still a little damp, a couple hundredths of an inch. The look at the leaves, they're changing on those trees, 67 degrees. We're going to add the muggy factor. I think for areas to the north of Highway 2 today, it's going to stay in the 70s, so really not all that warm outside. We go to 73 in Williston. Maybe the trees slain a little bit from those winds out of the west at 18 miles per hour. Um, and overall, we're going to keep the rain showers going. Some thunderstorm activity I think could start to pick up here. That brings us to that level one and two. Uh, we will have that temperature difference from near 90 actually in Hedinger for daytime highs to the upper 70s along Highway 2 with some additional rain chances all driven here by our low pressure system and so this is gradually still going to slide over. Now the question is the, it is cloudy in a lot of areas right now so we don't have that heat and instability necessarily but we have enough instability and moisture to still bring us some showers and storms to the eastern half of the state. So that brings us to our level two for Devils Lake to Jamestown. Even Bismarck is kind of on that cusp as well as Mandan. You could say that it really doesn't matter. The level here doesn't determine on how strong the storms are necessarily. It's just how numerous they are. So we're looking at maybe scattered to isolated uh, uh, strong to severe storms as well as for tomorrow another threat. This one will be to the west of Highway 83, likely uh, late Tuesday evening through the overnight hours to Wednesday morning. So for today's impacts, all threats are possible. Um, we have 60 mile per hour wind gusts, higher chance for Stutzman County, Kib uh, Kidder and Emmons, as well as Burley County. And east of there, we go to about golf ball, ping pong ball sized hail. It's about an inch and three quarters. And then there is a very low tornado threat. In fact, since this morning on Country Morning Today, that has been brought westward a little bit. So Highway 83 and east of there, anywhere in that green. So the way we map it out, the question is if the storms develop, first of all, there's still a definite chance that they might not, which is good. We don't need severe storms, but if they do, we're going to keep some shower and storm activity rolling right through the north central area. Then I think if they form, they're going to pick up in that sweet spot right around Jamestown, not necessarily in the north central area, but still that possibility. So we could see a little bit more of that northward shift, but that'll continue through the evening hours, then overnight tonight fizzling on out once that low pressure passes through. So just for the time being, some showers and storms mild still for us tonight in the 50s and 60s. Then we have enough instability once again for strong to severe storms tomorrow. Picking up right around dinner time continues the move off into the evening hours overnight and then into Wednesday morning. Again, that threat will be in eastern Montana to western North Dakota with a level one and two breezy conditions. Krista, as we go into our Wednesday evening as well as into our Thursday, temps over the weekend will be in those 70s for us. And so a warm with some storm chances. That's what we need to know this week. Yeah, it's still surprising to me that we're having summer like storms here in the middle of September. Yep, not unheard of. Definitely mm -hmm. becoming more unusual though as we get further and further into the fall season. If you yeah, say. <laughs> looks like a little more fall or seasonable temps come later in the week though. Yes, absolutely. Highs will be in those 70s. Excellent. Thanks so much, Heidi. Yep.